understand the difference between vibration and individual nature. What do I mean by that? The personality that is separate from the knowledge of self, of vibration, cannot know the effects of its own causes. What do I mean by that? Uh, a person who is an alcoholic, they're saying, cannot make a distinction between their addiction and the problems their addictions bring and the vibration of their own consciousness. They cannot separate the two. If they could separate the two, they would not be in a state of addiction, for they would choose the one that would make them naturally feel better. Um, but back to addressing, because you wish to record this, so we'll go back to your question of whether or not there are evil people in the what you call the ruling elites of the world. And we'll go back to our point of stressing that there are many people on the planet and there are many levels of consciousness from the highest of humans to the lowest of vibratory beings called humanity on the planet, from those who have no consideration or respect for self or others and those who have great respect for all life one cannot be expected to be mindful of or aware of all things in this world around them. And so to make the wrongful assumption that one family or another family that has greater or lesser wealth than another is more or less responsible for the overall impact on humanity is a grave error. For humanity is a collective that is designed to work as one. And in the process of separation, that effectiveness has been diminished significantly. The ones that this one connects to can only connect by, by vibrationally. You can only connect vibrationally. If you are not in vibrational harmony with someone or something, you cannot connect to it. It is impossible because the frequencies are invisible to one another. Just as uh, cell phones can now connect people from one part of the planet to another because the frequency the cell phones are on match, so too do human individuals in the day-to-day -day living of their life can only connect with those that are in vibratory match to one another. One cannot connect to what one is not in harmony with. This is impossible. You cannot mix oil and water. There are fundamental truths that cannot be violated, but which can be altered and changed in the construct of human volition, where human, human individuals can alter their will and their consciousness in order to change their vibration from one state into another, thereby connecting them to different experiences and potentials in the physical dimensions. When you know this distinction, you will not fear who you connect with, for who you connect with can only be on the vibrational resonance that you are. And so therefore, even if an experience is negative or detrimental to you, it is only because you are in vibratory resonance with. So it becomes very important to establish a vibrational consciousness. And we're using the word consciousness because it represents the whole connecting fabric of consciousness on the planet. When you vibrate at a high frequency of consciousness, you can only connect to high frequencies of consciousness. You may, by choice, extend that higher frequency down to lower frequencies where you may inspire or instill or trigger awareness in those that are at a lower vibrational rate to look up, kind of like sending a flare out in the middle of the night. People will look up if the light is bright enough. Even those in the darkest of places can be shown the light. And by light, we don't mean the light of a physical light or the light of a sun. We mean the light of consciousness, the light of love, the light of truth and illumination, which is available to every living sentient being on all levels of consciousness. It is always available, but must be consciously chosen and selected. Those actions must also be supported with proper nutrition, proper vibratory foods, proper thoughts, proper treatment of others, the vibration must always match, and it does always match. Whatever your circumstance, it is a vibrational match to that which you call your life. And you can change any of those at any time. And it's relatively simple. Even a breath can change a vibration. Even a thought of joy can change a vibration. Even a thought of wishing somebody you dislike a blessing can change a vibration. To consciously and intentionally move to a place of consciousness where you're deliberately, moment to moment, choosing to stay in a vibration of love, truth, and grace, 
then you shall experience the life of love, truth, and grace. And love provides all things freely to those who resonate with it. Those who live in a state of fear or uncertainty will live in a perception of lack, but it's only because they are at a low vibration of love's perception. There is nobody or nothing in all of creation that can ever be separate from love entirely. There are those who may be diminished in awareness of it to such an extent that their conditions relative to others or themselves may feel like a loveless state. But there is no such thing as a loveless state. All vibrations match. All vibrations can be changed at will at any time with sustained effort and persistence. So I have a question in regards to the match of vibration, which I do comprehend. But if someone was to be of a higher level and identify possibly taking advantage of or using someone that had not as much knowledge and pulled that person in, does that person who didn't have the knowledge share that deceptive vibration? Absolutely. The vibrations always match. There is no exception. Those who get taken advantage of or those who are taking advantage are both in vibratory resonance. They always match up. Those who get in accidents, those who have problems, relationship challenges, are in vibratory match. Those who are an abuser or an abused have a vibrational match. That vibrational match may be something that was instilled during the conception of the individual in this particular lifetime. It may have been a vibration that was acquired from previous lifetimes of experience where that energy, that vibration, is stored in the matrix of the soul. By the matrix of the soul, we mean the consciousness that has individualized itself for the experience of physical reality. For the physical reality is a very rare experience, and not all individual consciousnesses experience it, though many desire it. So if this is um, an aspect that can be in the uh, subconscious, how does one human release this? There are two ways the vibrations are changed and altered because this is what you're asking. How does one change a vibration in the subconscious mind mm -hmm. that allows allows for them? I'm sorry, I lost it. I'm sorry too, I had to move. <clears throat> Hang on, I've got to get back to that. You need to repeat the question again. So the question was, how is it that we can release these um, vibratory matches that we have that don't support us, that we're not even conscious of? How do we release these? It's essentially, how do we release, uh, I don't know if it's karma, but how do we release that out of our, our system so we can be of pure light and love? The beginning of all release from any form of what you call limitation or negative experience or emotional travesty or uh, challenges in life comes from conscious awareness is the first step. One must first become aware that there is a condition and then one must cultivate an awareness of what condition they wish to experience for it is in the focusing upon the identification of what one wishes to experience that will bring about the beginning of its manifestation. And attention must be taken off that which is the symptoms of the vibration that was one, one was calling a problem. So many of us, though, walk around and we are not consciously aware of what we call the problem. We are uh, just angry for no reason or um, feeling victims for no reason that we're conscious of and then we attract that of the same. So how does one uh, alter that? One has to first identify what that problem is and then shift the focus? One must first recognize that the behavior or action or emotion or experience that they're having is not one that they wish to repeat or experience again. At the point of deciding that this is not something I want, 
then one can decide what is it I do want. And in that choice of what one does want begins the movement away from what one doesn't want. But it must be a consciously chosen thing. So if somebody's used to yelling at people when they drive their car, other drivers, and they decide, I don't like this, I don't want to do this anymore, I want to change this behavior, the minute they decide that, they can begin the process of changing their vibration. And every time they so refuse to yell or scream or react as they did, they will change the vibration. They may likewise choose to express themselves in a more kind, compassionate, and loving way to accelerate the process of changing the vibration. And this basic principle applies to all things, whether it is a drug addiction or a behavior pattern that harms other people or uh, uh, an ideology that hurts other people. The minute you begin to consciously identify what you don't like and move towards what you do, the vibrational frequency begins to change. So let's take the example of what you said about being in a car and yelling at people. If one was to change to saying, oh, being graceful and allowing the other person to go first, how often, how many times would they have to do that in order to no longer ever feel the anger that they were previously triggered by while driving? This is a very good question. And our answer to you is quite simple. The minute the individual adamantly refuses to perform that behavior and so acts on that choice, the behavior can be changed instantly, literally instantly. The attractive element, that is the attraction of people that they would yell at, will stop immediately. They will begin to not attract reasons, behaviors, people that would cause them to yell and scream. So it's twofold. Once the decision is made internally, the external symptoms also begin to vanish, those things that triggered that behavior, for one is no longer attaching themselves to it and deciding to be graceful, deciding to be loving and respectful and courteous to others, and therefore they will attract that experience, and they will no longer experience anything that would cause them to yell or scream. So I'm not certain if I'm going to be clear on this question, but the question uh, is, if someone is essentially just triggered all the time, miserable all the time, angry all the time, being hurt all the time, feeling victimized, you know, and they, their, their general day has that feeling about them, like they, they, they work hard at smiling, say for an example. Um, how many key triggers are there in the average human that they have to resolve? Is there the anger trigger? Is there the victim trigger? Is it, or is it that it's under all, a lot of the emotion is under one umbrella. If they were to release that anger while driving, they'll find themselves at work being happier. They'll find themselves in their home being happier. How many triggers does the average human have that they need resolving that are to bring them to light and love? We would recommend that you not call them triggers, but that you call them opportunities for changing one's consciousness. For this is, what the, this is what all of these events are. Anything that would make one uncomfortable is an opportunity to change and choose something better that is more comfortable. There are countless numbers of these triggers that occur in the day of a human being. And each one is the opportunity to make a choice, a different choice. A choice towards love or a choice towards pain and suffering. Those are the only two choices, love or fear. There can be no other choice. Yes, um, but for an example, with the, again, back to the car and the anger there, does that anger, is it like an umbrella that triggers throughout the day in various different circumstances and situations whereby if one can truly release that anger, that fun foundational belief, whatever it is, that people are trying to harm me, that will alter different aspects of their, of their life? Well, yes. When you can change a fundamental belief, a behavior pattern, say anger that you carry through you most of the day, and you make a decision to not do that, it will have what uh, we'll call a cascading effect in that it will begin to transform all areas of the individual's life. It'll begin to unravel the thread 
of pain and suffering the minute one makes the choice to not express anger or fear or feel certain negative feelings. The de decision to not experience those things is as important as the choice to experience something better. But one leads to the other. They are not inseparable. They are inseparable. To choose not to suffer is to choose to live in comfort and joy. So my logical brain wants to know, on average, how many fundamental beliefs that are not serving us as humans do we have on average? Like, does the average person have three or five or ten? And if they can resolve those three or five or ten fundamental beliefs, then they will just open themselves up to light and love? There are only two fundamental belief systems that operate in human consciousness. The first one is fear. The second one is love. And there are many offsprings to what you call fear, such as anger, guilt, shame, sadness, condemnation, criticism, gossip, as there are many orphans of love, such as compassion and kindness and peacefulness and mindfulness, gentleness, soft spoken of speech, there are many different facets to each of those individuals, uh, aspects of uh, the individual's consciousness, but there are only love and fear ultimately. And every moment is a choice between those two. Love it. Okay, so again, it comes back to um, John Lennon's All You Need Is Love. All You Need Is Love. And, and many, 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 many philosophers throughout the seasons yes. have expressed this. Yes. Yes, yeah, so it's the it's the logical brain who tries to make more of it. It does, because the individual is creative. The creative mind likes to create. It likes to create different experiences so that it does not get bored with its existence in the body. Everyone came into these physical mechanisms to experience variety and change and a range of different things to come into a body to not experience those things would be counterproductive. Um, you came here to experience many different experiences and to learn from them, to understand your own true nature, which is love, and to experience its opposite leads you to the thing you wish to live, which is love. But life would be pretty boring if you did not have any way to learn the difference between one thing and another. What would be the point? Precisely. Who 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 are you, who is speaking? We are just speaking as a collective right now. We're not speaking as separate individuals. If it's needed to speak as a separate individual, then we could say we are Jesus. We could say we are Metatron. We could say we are whoever we chose to say we are, because we are. All that is is interconnected, and there are planes of consciousness where unity consciousness functions, much the same way as your Hand, the fingers on your hand, while they are separate, all function together in the motion of a hand, as does the movement of your body when you walk. The entire movement of your legs and your arms make the whole body move together in unison. So from that context, there is just one life, one consciousness, with many different aspects to it. But there are times we prefer to work as a group, as one. There are times we prefer to work as individuals. This is a time where we prefer to work as a group. There are individuals that need the perception of an individual persona that they, humanity at times needed Jesus Christ to come into a body. Humanity needed the persona of Joan of Arc to come into a body. Or Martin Luther King, the individual aspects of an unbroken continuum of consciousness for the benefit of teaching many other individuals to come back to the truth of unity. All of the work of Jesus was to unify people into the joint venture of universal consciousness while still having the benefit of being individual expressions of it um, to maintain their individuality while still being united in a whole harmony. Much the same way as you will see a flock of birds flying together in formation, so too humans can be both the formation and the individual birds flying in it. Um, that is funny because... I when I look at um, like a bir bird flocking or or a whale in the ocean, fish, anything, any animal, I can feel what they're feeling inside. Yes, 
And everyone has that potential to experience the life, the beingness of another, because the other beingness is not separate from any other being in essence. Uh -huh. Which is why people are so conflicted on the human realm today, because they are operating in contradiction, in separation from the planetary consciousness, and therefore doing it harm, treating it like it's something separate. Yes. And this must cease, or the planet will not tolerate this behavior, for the planet is a living consciousness, a living individual of planetary consciousness, yes. which has unity with planets. Mm -hmm. So your Earth that you live on has a united consciousness with all other planets in this solar system, as this solar system has a connection to all other solar systems in the galaxy. There is an unbroken interconnecting web between all that is. Between all that is. So they communicate to one another as as like we commu communicate to ourselves. Yes, the language and the medium of communication is different, but the overall effect is the same. One planet can speak to another planet. One star can speak to another star, but they can also function as unified whole. Much the same way as the millions of atoms that make up your physical body work in unison to produce the effects called an individual cell, and then those individual cells as multi-billions of there are, there are in your body, those billions of cells also work in unison and as individuals. So the concept of the individual and the whole works simultaneously throughout all creation, whether it's physical creation or non-physical creation. The part and the whole operate simultaneously and in conjunction with each other. They are inseparable, but they are separable too. So the state of the planet right now, the position that we're in, um, the vibrations that the majority of the, of the people give off, is this something that was always known, that we would go through this ebb and flow, yin and yang, maybe that's not a good one, yin and yang, but ebb and flow um, process in order to come back to pendulum process in order to come back to source that we had to see the uh, the dark in order to come to the light was this known or did this just happen because of human nature if you take a look at the cycles of your natural world and the way you have different seasons and the way plant life evolves and expands the way animal life grows and evolves the way it propagates and grows well so too does humanity and every so many millennia, human consciousness expands and grows to a point where, like these seeds that leave a flower, so too humanity has left this planet and gone forth on to the stars. And this cycle has repeated itself many, many times. You are just another process of that cycle. The overall effect on the planet right now is that resources are taken into the human consciousness so they can facilitate another movement from this planet into the stars, among the space, to explore itself to seed itself, if you like, out there. And that process is well underway. As far as the planetary consciousness goes, there are certain physical limits that come within being in a physical dimension. In other words, if you drink a glass of water, the glass will become empty. Um, so this to this planet, if you take too much resources from it, the resources will be gone. Um, this too, though, is part of the process. There is no right or wrong here. The vibration of human consciousness is directly affecting the way this planet is evolving and changing as time goes on. Equally, human consciousness also interacts with the different planets from the level that it is at. So humanity as a whole is exerting an influence not only on the conditions that exist upon the planet alone, but upon the conditions in the planet of the solar system as a whole, and so on. The part is in the whole, the whole is in the part. They work simultaneously together and in unison, but also function as individuals. So, as a whole, I was going to say, what is the one word that needs to be spread to keep it simple mm. that people will change and wake up to? But I think we already said that word earlier. Yes, we did. But there is a process for some. Yes, that's There's, the point. There is a process for some that need to know and feel what that is. 
and this is why there are teachers. This is why there are those of different potential. There are, this is why there are teachers. This is why we come to this dimension, to speak through individuals like this, to speak to you, to give you the opportunity to change your vibrational frequency. For you cannot learn something new from your own potential. You must have a different potential in order to expand and change your consciousness. And so every human soul on this planet is a different potential within a collective whole. So anytime you interact with one aspect or another, you offer the opportunity to change the potential of either yourself or the other. The same too is the relationship with humanity as a whole in the planet. If the vibrational potential of humanity so changes, it will affect the vibrational potential of the planet. And likewise, as the planet shifts and changes in vibrational relationship to the other planets and the stars, so too will it affect human consciousness. But it is a two-way street, it is not a one-way street. So a balance can always be maintained while still increasing and enhancing individual growth and potential too. So balance can be maintained while still growth and potential occur. That's, uh, you cannot learn something new from your own potential is a uh, new food for thought for me, but I guess it's kind of obvious. We, but our potential uh, grows any moment we uh, allow it to, like by reading or by, by be, being given new information. Precisely. So you have to have something that is outside of your own potential to interact with you for your potential to change and vice versa. Is, is that the whole meaning of life? Is that expression, exploration of potential? It is the great cosmic dance of I take your hand and you take my hand and we dance. Ah. Oh. And we dance and we all dance. And this is a great dance. So is potential, can you be, uh, is potential always viewed in a positive way where it's a positive dance? Or because I mean, when I hear dance and we all dance, it's not always positive. So is potential always positive? The word itself sounds positive, but the dance isn't always positive. The dance for some does not get perceived or experienced as positive, but the overall effect is. Right. For you cannot change what's happening on one side of the equation without changing what's happening on the other side. For, for every time there's an increase in fear, there's an increase in love. Yeah. If there's a decrease in fear, there's a decrease in fear. <laughs> there's no polarity that can stop love from being what it is. And there's no polarity that can stop fear from being what it is. But they do interact with each other to create changes in potential. Yes. That was awesome. I think we've covered enough for today. Yes. We have work to do. Yes, we do. Much love. Much love. Thank you.